I was talking and you're also always talking about adoption. Yes. So uh, I was talking to, to our audience also about adoption that we need to work on that adoption uh, in our local communities. That all of them need to work for uh, adoption in the local to make it more global. Maybe you can give uh, our, all of us some advice how to work on adoption in the proper way with the Bitcoin. I have a slightly different perspective on mainstream adoption than, than many of the people who are in this space. Some people believe that in order to get mainstream adoption, you have to go out there and you have to advertise and promote and uh, basically tell people to use these technologies. That you have to persuade people to use this technology. That you have to go into every store and say, do you accept Bitcoin? No. I'm not buying anything from you, ha, and walk out. <laughs> You're going to get very hungry if you do that. And very soon you won't have too many friends. They'll be like, hey man, we're going to the party next week. Hey, did anyone invite Philip? Oh, no. All he does is talk about Bitcoin all the time. <laughs> <laughs> have you been there? I've been there. <laughs> Um, I think it's important to recognize that not everybody needs this technology. Also, the technology is not ready for everyone. It's still difficult to use. It's difficult to secure. It's difficult to operate in a convenient way. The user interfaces are very poor. It requires a very high level of technical understanding and expertise to operate, even more so to operate securely. And so, why do you need it in your life? Maybe you have this particular balance of skill and need, and it's right for you today. But maybe it's not right for your friend. Maybe it won't be right for another five years. Maybe this Lottie has to go to shit before it's right for them. Right? You know, I, I went to Greece in, in 2010, after the crisis. And I told people, you really should look into Bitcoin, it's important. Nobody listened. Now I go, everybody wants to know about Bitcoin. Yeah, you give it eight years of economic recession, and suddenly everybody is interested in sound money. Everybody becomes a monetary economist. <laughs> the secret about money is that you can ignore it if it works. The moment it stops working, you cannot ignore it. It's everywhere. It ruins everything. And so there are some countries in the world today where it's needed. There are some applications today where it's needed. If you meet uh, an immigrant who's a taxi driver who sends money to their uh, to their family in Kuwait, in Jordan, in the Sudan, in any other country like that, in Mexico, whatever. And they currently use Western Union, and it costs them a minimum of five to ten dollars to do a wire transfer, and it takes three to five business days, and they give them a terrible exchange rate. Yeah, maybe they need this technology. Maybe they could do something better. But your average Polish person who's shopping, they don't need it. So you have to be careful. First of all, don't promise things you can't deliver. Right? Don't tell people, oh, this is miracle money, it will always be free, fast, and secure, and it's so easy to use. It's not. Don't try to push it on people who have no interest in playing with your little weird experiment. We don't need to invite everyone into the neighborhood yet. I think the most important thing is to look within your community at the people who came to cryptocurrencies for the wrong reasons. And that's okay. A lot of us got into cryptocurrencies, maybe some for the right reasons, maybe some for the wrong reasons, right? You all have this friend who you've been telling about Bitcoin since 2015. You're like, "Hey, good price right now. Maybe you should get involved." They're like, "Oh no, that's stupid internet money. I'm not buying into your scam." And then they call you in December of 2017. And they're like, my friend, you're the Bitcoin guy. Tell me, how do I get some? They're like, now? You want to buy now at 19,000? No, don't, don't. Go away. 
Come back in six months. <laughs> Right? You've all been part of this conversation. Suddenly everybody's like, oh, Bitcoin, 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 or Ethereum, Ethereum, or they want the whole spectrum. You've got your friend who you told about this again and again and again and again. Finally, in 2017, they go buy a bunch of Bitcoin at $19,000, and then they go day trading for the next two weeks. And they call you up and they say, hey, I've heard that Sia, Tron, and Neo are about to break out from the pennies into major market cap. I'm trying to trade Neo for Sia on Poloniex, but I'm having some problems with my authentic... And you're like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> right? They've gone full casino. Who has a friend like that? <laughs> Who are calling you now and asking... I'm not being nasty about these particular cryptocurrencies. There's, you know, there's 2,000 cryptocurrencies out there, and they're calling you up and they're asking you about these. And you're like, what? <laughs> or worse, they go full pyramid scheme. And they go, oh yeah, man, I heard you. I heard about this Bitcoin and I got so excited. And now I've invested my entire retirement in BitConnect. <laughs> like, oh shit. Oops. So there's a time, and then there's a the wrong time, and then there's a way to address this topic. And the way is not to try to tell people what is the right choice, because you don't know what the right choice is. You think you do, I think I do, but if I start advising people and say, I think you should buy now or sell now, or buy this or sell that, I'm going to be wrong on average more often than I'm right, and in the end, people are going to be very disappointed. What you need to do is help people make their own choices by educating them. Right? Okay. So some of the rules apply to everything. For example, don't put all of your investments into one thing. That's smart advice. Yes? Don't try to be a day trader unless you're a day trader. Okay, because you will lose everything. That's smart advice. Other advice. If you see something that promises guaranteed daily returns of 10%, it's a Ponzi scheme. And then when your friend says, it can't be a Ponzi scheme, I've been making so much money. You're like, that's why it's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> The first people always make so much money. You can advise people to be careful of frauds. You can advise people that this space does have, unfortunately, a lot of scams in it. Right? There's things that are based on real technology, and then there's things that are wrapped in a cloud of ever-changing bullshit that's swirling so fast you don't know what to check first. And so you get lost in it. You can educate people on the basics. How do I keep my currency secure? Why should I have a wallet where I control the keys versus just leaving all my money on a third-party exchange? Why should I not use a web wallet? How do I back up my wallet? How do I save my seed? This is basic education, right? So what you should do is give basic education, not on what to choose, but on how to understand which choices make sense and which don't. And the great news is this. Of all of the people who just arrived, and there's always a hundred new people who just arrived, they just heard about it in the last six months, most of them came for the wrong reason. Most of them came because of greed and excitement about the current price spike. Some of them will stay, and those who will stay, if you help educate them on best practices, if you help them learn how to use this as part of their life, to learn skills that will help them in their career, to learn how to interact with other people and to bring them into the community, you've built the next generation. We're going to have another bubble. And when we have another bubble, a whole bunch of newbies are going to come in, and then most of them are going to leave as soon as the price crashes, and then you catch a few more, and you keep repeating that. So don't try to sell this too hard. I think the first thing you should accept 
This is not for everyone. Not everyone needs cryptocurrency. Not everyone needs cryptocurrency now. Not everyone is ready to understand cryptocurrency. Not everyone is ready to use cryptocurrency, and it's okay. That's okay. Otherwise, you're the asshole who is pushing something that people don't need and don't want in order to promote really your own greed, right? And in fact, you should be very careful when you see people like that in the community who are trying to persuade people to buy into the latest exciting investment, those people are toxic to community. And you need to be very, very careful. So hopefully that's some advice that you can put to practice here. Um, communities that are based on education are sustainable, are long-lasting, and they keep growing regardless of what the price does. I've seen this again and again. I've been involved in funding, uh, sorry, founding several um, physical communities, local communities, in San Francisco, in Chicago, and other places. And I've seen those communities thrive. They get very busy when the price is high, but they remain sustainable even when it's not. <laughs>